16代目のクラウン日本の歴史に重ね合わせればそれは明治維新ですご覧ください新しい時代の幕開けです Although several engines have been around for a while, it is becoming increasingly clear that there are more efficient ways to provide the necessary power to transport our cars from point A to point B. Toyota believes that hydrogen power is the way to go and that its new engines will render electric vehicles obsolete. It's time to examine the development of Toyota's engines in more detail and discover some other factors that contribute to Toyota's position as a market leader. How does Toyota achieve this? Can Toyota's hydrogen powered internal combustion engine replace electric vehicles? Let's find out. Toyota is pursuing a multifaceted strategy to being carbon neutral, and the Japanese automaker may find success with it. Toyota has been a pioneer in hybrid and plug in hybrid automobiles since it introduced the groundbreaking Prius in 1997. These vehicles paved the way for the present electric vehicle boom. Despite its heritage, the Japanese company has been reluctant to embrace the all electric trend head on. The controversy surrounding Toyota's opposition to the switch to 100% electric is rather thought provoking. The ban on gas powered cars by 2035 has already been authorized by legislators in California, Australia, Canada, the European Union, and Australia. Automotive makers are under intense pressure to switch from gas to electric automobiles as efforts to reduce carbon emissions escalate. Toyota, meanwhile, publicly showed its disobedience by declining to ratify the COP26 agreement, which calls for the use of electric vehicles only by 2040. The corporation has purposefully dragged its feet on the issue, arguing that the rush to fully electric vehicles has left many important considerations out. Akio Toyota, the former CEO of Toyota, received a lot of flack for taking an unpopular position. Jaguar, a British luxury automaker, said publicly that it would go entirely electric by 2025 back in February 2022. Cadillac and Volvo have also stated that they will only sell electric vehicles after 2030. Toyota is in the news for appearing uninterested in a market where many rivals, including Honda, Ford, Mercedes, Volkswagen, and General Motors, Intend to phase out gasoline powered vehicles in favor of electric vehicles. Toyota has a reputation for being among the first to adopt new technologies, so taking this path surprised us. However, its justification is really compelling. Toyota worries that making the changeover to all electric vehicles won't be feasible anytime soon. Akio Toyota said that EVs are just overhyped and that having too many of them could be dangerous. His opinion is that the high price of electric vehicles, combined with the lack of a supporting infrastructure, renders their widespread adoption impossible. However, all of it is now hidden from the public because electric vehicles only make up approximately 1% of the global auto fleet. If the number of electric vehicles rises, reality will begin to set in slowly. The biggest issue to deal with when electric vehicles flood the market will be the demand for electricity. To meet the load demand that electric vehicles will provide by 2030, the United States needs to expand power output by 40%. In other words, the current electricity supply chain needs to receive investments totaling around $100 billion. Even if some regions of Europe and Asia currently have sophisticated grids as a result of increased electric vehicle customer demand, it would still be far from enough if every car owner switched to electric. Akio Toyota has voiced reservations regarding electric cars, focusing instead on the necessity of hydrogen powered technology in vehicles. Akio Toyota predicts that this new engine will destroy the entire EV market. Aside from the limited range of electric cars, he has also expressed concern over the environmental effects of battery production and disposal, as well as the lack of infrastructure for charging. Indeed, Toyota's arguments make a lot of sense. First, there is not enough power to support electric vehicles. Second, fossil fuels are the main source of electricity in the world. 
Therefore, increasing the number of electric vehicles won't decrease emissions. Rather, it will just change their source. His detractors may all be mistaken based on Akio Toyota's assertion that carbon, not combustion engines, is the enemy. From broad views, it appears that electric vehicle adoption is not uniform worldwide. While certain markets, like those in Europe and China, move more quickly than others, the United States is a laggard. Then there are markets that are far behind with little to no EV infrastructure, like Africa. This disparity suggests that the globe is not yet prepared to forward the all-electric vehicles objective collectively. Toyota believes that switching to all-electric vehicles will leave a sizable number of its consumers completely in the dark. In 2021, Toyota sold more than 10.5 million units in more than 200 nations, making it the car maker with the greatest global market penetration. The business boasts a substantial market share across the board, particularly in underdeveloped nations with subpar charging infrastructure. By 2035, these areas will not be able to build the infrastructure necessary to support electric vehicles. Electric vehicles are also highly pricey. Electric vehicles are currently somewhat less expensive because of government subsidies intended to encourage people to purchase them. It's unclear how long governments will maintain these incentives, particularly once mass production starts. Without financial incentives, many buyers would not be eager to spend a fortune on an electric vehicle. The corporation thinks that switching to a mixed engine is more practical than going entirely electric. They refer to it as a balanced approach, suggesting hybrid vehicles. Toyota is actively pursuing the development of hydrogen-powered vehicles because of this. Toyota's hydrogen strategy, the promotion of hydrogen-powered vehicles as a zero-emission substitute for gasoline and diesel-powered autos, is now being done by internal combustion engines, ICE. The business is developing a new internal combustion engine that burns hydrogen and might destroy the electric vehicles market. Lithium-ion batteries power electric vehicles. It is clear from the name alone that lithium is a key component used in the creation of the batteries. Lithium, regrettably, is not one of those naturally occurring metals in great abundance. When electric vehicles begin to be produced in large quantities, the Toyota team predicts a looming lithium shortage. Given its limited quantity, they are worried about where it will be sourced. Killing two birds with one stone is how Toyota describes its suggested solution to this issue. Instead of producing larger batteries for electric-only vehicles, they advise producing smaller batteries for hybrid automobiles. One way that this plan will handle the lithium shortage is by using more batteries with limited lithium. Hybrid automobiles, on the other hand, will emit fewer emissions than conventional cars. How the world will function after only electric vehicles are on the roads has not yet been determined. But Toyota clarifies what to anticipate. Going all electric will put a burden on the world's metal resources used to create batteries. In addition to lithium, there will be an increase in demand for nickel and manganese, two additional essential metals used in the production of batteries. The cost of batteries may be affected, which may therefore have an impact on the price of cars. Toyota believes that relying on government incentives, which may end at any time, is highly dangerous. Only a small portion of new cars sold are all electric, leaving room for alternative types of vehicles to enter the market. Toyota has chosen this route. Let's examine the hydrogen combustion engine in more detail to discover why Toyota officials believe it may eventually render electric vehicles obsolete. Let's introduce the Corolla Cross H2 concept. The Toyota Corolla Cross H2 concept employs a brand new hydrogen ICE, internal combustion engine, prototype vehicle. The powerful 1.6-liter, three-cylinder turbocharged engine that powers the GR Corolla and GR Yaris has been adapted to run on hydrogen. The highly flammable hydrogen technology that Toyota learned with its FCEV, fuel cell electric vehicle, the Mirai, first needs to be stored in thick armored fuel tanks. Stronger connecting rods, harder valves and valve seats, and fuel injectors made for gas rather than liquid are added to the engine. The Cross H2 concept can accommodate five passengers and their belongings much like a regular Corolla. In other thrilling news for auto enthusiasts everywhere, Toyota and Yamaha Motor have teamed up to create a V8 engine that runs on hydrogen. The 5.0-liter V8 
which Yamaha stated would be based on the one used by the Lexus RC Coupe, will have adjustments to its cylinder heads and fuel injectors, among other things, in a recent release. Yamaha claims that it will generate 398 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 revolutions per minute and 455 horsepower at 6,800 revolutions per minute. Even though it has a little less power than the base gasoline V8, it is still fairly acceptable. The 8 into 1 top-mounted exhaust manifold, which Yamaha claims produces a distinct high-frequency sound, must be the most amazing aspect of the hydrogen V8. You have to admit that, while it may not be the most exciting part of your day, filling up your gas-powered internal combustion engine vehicle is not a difficult process. Because hydrogen is a gas rather than a liquid, filling up a car with it is just as simple and takes much less time to complete. If you've ever had a propane tank filled, as opposed to being replaced with a new one, you know how quickly the procedure will go. In actuality, it takes the new Toyota Yaris GRH2 only one and a half minutes to fill up completely with hydrogen, which is far quicker than it would take for a Toyota Camry to fill up with unleaded gasoline. On the other hand, diesel fuel has long been used in vehicles that must pull heavy loads. But in regions where the temperature drops into the negative double digits, they can freeze. Unleaded fuel, thankfully, can endure temperatures as low as minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit which is what can occur with some really chilly wind chill effects. Prior to starting to freeze up, lithium batteries can tolerate temperatures of up to minus 140 degrees Fahrenheit, though this can still happen sometimes. Because hydrogen can tolerate temperatures as low as minus 435 degrees Fahrenheit, it is the ideal choice for all cold climates. The same is true at the hot end of the spectrum. Hydrogen is far better at adapting to different climates than the other two possibilities that are now available. The materials used to make lithium batteries are difficult to produce. In reality, a lot of individuals believe that there would be a shortage of lithium and battery-grade nickel, which will make it difficult to create the lithium batteries used in electric vehicles. If hydrogen-powered engines are designed to their fullest capacity, this could prevent a significant delay in the transition to electric vehicles. One of the main issues with electric vehicles, automobiles and trucks in particular, is sound. Nothing compares to the thrill of depressing the gas pedal on an old classic muscle car, such as a 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle SS with a large block 454 or a 1969 Ford Mustang with a 428 Cobra Jet. When an automobile is about to launch, you may hear the sound of the carburetors opening as the fuel pours into the chambers feel the power flow through your chest and experience a complete burst of adrenaline. Electric vehicles cannot provide it, but the hydrogen-powered vehicle can because it operates in a similar manner. Nearly every corner in the country is home to a tiny local repair business, but as electric vehicles gain in popularity among customers, you won't have that option any longer. You might be able to repair their electric engine by going online and watching a few YouTube videos but it is strongly advised that you take it to a certified mechanic who is experienced with the most recent technology. The amazing thing about hydrogen-powered engines is that they are purely mechanical and are quite similar to fuel-powered engines. That implies that the little neighborhood shops you feel safe bringing your cars to will be able to fix them. The fact that hydrogen is very combustible, challenging to handle and store, and produces nitrous oxide during burning are some drawbacks. Toyota's approach to carbon neutrality is more diverse, considering many technologies in order to accomplish the objective of zero emissions, in contrast to practically all other automakers who are placing their entire faith in electric vehicles. This mindset looks more and more prophetic in light of the fact that European nations are seeking ways to reduce their energy use due to the conflict in Ukraine and its effects on energy supplies. In fact, Switzerland has taken it a step further by advising electric vehicle owners to reserve the usage of their vehicles for emergencies like errands or supermarket runs. This policy may even become law. There is a route to success for hydrogen-powered cars, but it might ultimately be obstructed by electric vehicle dominance. Hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles include cutting-edge technology that has a lot of potential. They also have a number of benefits over conventional electric vehicles, including a greater range and faster charging or refueling. 
However, for hydrogen-powered cars to become widely used, a number of technological developments are required. At the moment, it costs a lot and requires a lot of fossil fuel to produce hydrogen. Infrastructure for hydrogen refueling stations is also lacking. Most importantly, the popularity of non-hydrogen electric vehicles may be preventing hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles from taking off. People need a good reason to give up their Teslas. Therefore, until one is presented, hydrogen-powered cars might remain unpopular. Technology for hydrogen fuel cells has already been around for a while. It was created in the late 1960s to supply electricity for NASA's manned space flights. Since then, it has been refined and may currently be used to power a terrestrial vehicle in place of an internal combustion engine. An electrolyte membrane, an anode, and a cathode make up a conventional hydrogen fuel stack. While oxygen is fed to the cathode, hydrogen is fed to the anode, where it is divided into protons and electrons. While the protons pass across the membrane and change into water, the electrons are compelled into a circuit, producing electricity. Hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles have a reinforced tank of compressed hydrogen that travels through the fuel stack, in contrast to conventional EVs that are powered by a battery pack. The vehicle's electric motors are driven by this converted electricity, and only harmless water vapor is released from the exhaust. The lack of range is the main criticism among electric vehicle users, and hydrogen-powered vehicles potentially address this issue. The Hyundai Nexo can travel 385 miles on a single fill-up, while the Toyota Mirai can go an additional 402 miles, compared to an average electric vehicle range of 250 miles. The length of time it takes to charge an electric vehicle is the second most common complaint among owners. An electric vehicle battery pack can be fully charged at home in 8 to 40 hours. However, filling up a hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle simply takes a few minutes and works the same way as a gas-powered vehicle. For their H2 vehicles, Toyota and Hyundai both provide free fill-ups. Toyota offers its customers free hydrogen refueling for six years or $15,000, whichever comes first. Similar terms of three years or $13,000 in fill-ups are offered by Hyundai. Infrastructure is where hydrogen fuel cell vehicles most need to advance. Simply put, there aren't that many hydrogen refueling locations. There are just about 60 in the United States, about 15 in Great Britain, and all of them are in the state of California. There are only a few in Canada. If you can't fill the tank, no one will buy a hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle. The cost of hydrogen is the next significant problem. For a brief period, automakers do provide free fill-ups, but eventually owners are on their own. The price of hydrogen is comparable to that of gasoline and can reach $12 per gallon. For hydrogen-powered vehicles to succeed, that cost must be reduced to $2 per gallon, the electric vehicle equivalent. The fact that hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles are not as ecologically beneficial as claimed is another drawback. Making hydrogen requires a lot of energy, and today, fossil fuels account for 99% of production. While the vehicle itself may not contribute to pollution, the production of its fuel most certainly does. Finding a renewable energy option for hydrogen production is necessary to increase public interest in H2 vehicles. Infrastructure can be created, and new, more affordable, environmentally friendly methods of producing hydrogen can be discovered. It makes sense that since the technology is still in its infancy, it will only advance in terms of powering automobiles. Hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles can compete with electric vehicles for drivers by matching their economy. However, even if H2 vehicles were to become as affordable and practical to use as electric vehicles, battery technology is also advancing and enhancing range, which would eliminate the advantage of hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles. Electric vehicle owners may find no compelling reason to switch from a Model S to a Mirai in the end. When everything is equal, consumers will stick with what they are familiar with. However, with its dynamic force engine strategy, Toyota has gained considerable prominence. The foundation of their dynamic force engine concept is increased thermal effectiveness. For instance, Toyota is said to have developed motors with a 41% thermal efficiency today, which is a noteworthy accomplishment given that the majority of gasoline engines have efficiencies of approximately 25, 
33%. Finally, the decision is up to the consumer. Battery electric vehicles and hydrogen combustion engine vehicles both have the potential to make substantial contributions to a sustainable transportation system, as is well known. It is unlikely that either technology will replace the other. Instead, they will coexist and fulfill various functions according to individual consumer tastes and circumstances. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.